your time is limited don't waste it living someone else's life don't be trapped by dogma which is living the result of other people's thinking don't let the noise of others opinion drown your own inner voice and most important have the courage to follow your heart and intuition they somehow already know what you truly want to become everything else is secondary how beautifully it is stated by steve jobs with this amazing thought a very good morning to all my dear students i hope that you all are in good health this is shreya jadav welcoming you all to my e learning channel and today we are going to do english grade 10 chapter 7 glimpses of india in this chapter glimpses of india we have three different parts a baker from goa kurg tea from assam this is the second video of unit 7 in the previous video we have seen the reading and explanation of the chapter a baker from goa and kurg today we are going to have a quick overview for the first two chapters and then we shall proceed with the reading and explanation of the third part of unit number 7 glimpses of india t from assam written by arup kumar datta so let us have a quick look on the first and the second part of the chapter about the author a baker from goa lucio rodriguez born on 1891 died in 1973 was a great konkani essayist he wrote several articles in english and konkani to various periodicals and magazines he served as the visiting professor of folklore at many universities and also a professor of english in mumbai and goa His essays were posthumously published under the title of Soil and Soul and Konkani Folk Tales. Subtle humor and informal narration are the essential features of his writings. Introduction for answer. Prose prose name a baker from goa author's name lucio rodriguez genre short story summary this is a pen portrait of a traditional goan village baker who still has an important place in the society what changes take place in the life of the baker with the passage of time a glimpse of it is presented in this extract so now let us have a summary of a baker from goa the people of goa have been habituated to eating bread from the time of the portuguese rule the elders remember this the portuguese have gone but the makers of the loaves with their mixtures and molders are still there with their age old furnaces one can still hear the thud of the traditional baker's bamboo in the morning where the second generation still carries on the profession they are known as peder in goa 
the writer remembered that in his childhood the friendly baker would come at least twice a day the jingling third of his bamboo would wake up the children and they would get up and run to greet him the children were not interested in the loaves but only in the bread bengal or the special sweet bread the bread basket would be placed on a vertical bamboo the young children would be driven away but they would climb the benches and the railing to see what was in the basket the narrator remembers the fragrance of the loaves the children did not didn't bother about brushing their teeth with a mango leaf toothbrush they satisfied themselves with the thought that the tiger never brushed his teeth and the hot tea would wash and clean their teeth up nicely even today the baker is important for every village marriage gifts are meaningless without sweet bread called bowl all parties and feasts would lose their charm without bread for a daughter's engagement the lady of the house had to make sandwiches cakes and bolinas were a must for christmas and other festivals in the olden days the baker or the bread seller had a peculiar dress called the kabai it was a single piece of long frock reaching the knees in the narrator's childhood he saw bakers wearing a shirt and trousers which were shorter than full length ones and longer than half pants people still joke that a person wearing a half pant below the knees is dressed like a pedlar the bread money was collected monthly and the accounts were written on a wall in pencil baking was a profitable business in olden days the baker's family never starved but he and his workers looked happy plump and prosperous even today a person with a jackfruit like physical appearance is compared to a baker so now let us have a quick look on the second part of the chapter about the author lokesh ebrol or dr lokesh ebrol is a doctor traveler and social entrepreneur who loves india and likes writing about different places he visited in india kurg is in karnataka and is famous for coffee rainforest and spices it lies geographically between mysore and mangalore introduction for answers prose prose name kurg author's name lokesh ebrol genre short story summary kurg is a coffee country famous for its rain forest and spices so let us have a short summary of the chapter kurg Kurg or Kodagu is the smallest district of Karnataka and is situated between Mysore and Mangalore. It is a beautiful heavenly place and resembles a kingdom of God. It has an evergreen forest with spices and coffee plantations. It covers 30% of the district. it rains heavily in the monsoon the best time to visit it is from september to march there are coffee estates and colonial bungalows hidden under the tree canopies 
the people of Kurg are of Greek and Arabic descent. It is believed that a group of Alexander's soldiers settled here and married local women. Their culture is seen in the marital traditions and religious rites followed by Kurgis. The men wear a long black coat called the kupi. It is like a kufi worn by the Arabs and Kurds. The Kurgis are very hospitable people and have many stories of bravery. General Kariappa, the first army chief, was a Kurgi. Even today, Kodavus are the only people in India who carry firearms without a license. The Kurg regiment is very respectable in the Indian army for their bravery. The Kaveri River flows through the hills and the forests in Kurg. The Mahasir fish are found in abundance in this region. There are animals like elephants and monkeys like macaws and langurs, squirrels, birds like kingfisher, bees and butterflies near the river. The region offers people high energy adventure with river rafting, canoeing, rappling, rock climbing and mountain biking. There are many trails for trekkers when one climbs the Brahmagiri hills one gets a wide ranging view of Kurg. A walk across the rope bridge brings one to 64 acre island of Nishargadma which is India's largest Bodhish monks Tibetan settlement. One can see them in robes of red, yellow and ochre colors. Thus Kirk helps one to discover the heart and soul of India. So this is all about the summary of the unit Kirk. Now let us proceed to the third unit. Before that, let us know something about the author. Arup Kumar Datta, born in 1946, is an Indian writer and journalist based out of Guwahati in Assam. He was, he has written 16 books for adults and 17 adventure novels for young people. In 2014, he was awarded the Lifetime Achievement Honor by the Association of Writers and Illustrators for Children. He has been awarded the Civilian Award Padma Shri by the Government of India in 2018. Introduction for Answers Dear students, always remember that whenever you are appearing for exams or tests, always begin your answers with introduction. This creates a really good impact. So here it is. Prose Prose name T from Assam Author's name Arup Kumar Datta. Genre Short Story. Summary Pranjol, a youngster from Assam, is Rajveer's classmate at school in Delhi. Pranjol has invited Rajveer to his home during summer vacation. So now, let us have a short summary of the third part of Unit 7 Glimpses of India, 
T from Assam. Two friends, Pranjol and Rajveer, studied in Delhi. Pranjol came from Assam where his father was a manager in a tea garden. Pranjol invited Rajveer to his hometown in summer vacation. While they were travelling by train, they heard a vendor saying, Chai Garam Garam Chai. Rajveer, who was well read, told Pranjol that over 80 crore cups of tea are sipped daily in the world. From the train, they saw many beautiful tea gardens where there were ladies picking the tea leaves and there was an ugly building with smoke billowing out of the tall chimneys. Rajveer was very excited and he told his friend that Assam was a tea country and had the largest concentration of tea plantation in the world. Rajveer told his friends some legends about tea. According to one legend, there was a Chinese emperor who always boiled water before drinking. One day, as the water was being boiled, few leaves of the twig burning under the pot fell into the water. It gave a delicious flavor. The leaves were tea leaves. According to other, another legend, there was an ancient Bodhis ascetic named Bodhidharma who cut off his eyelids during, because he felt sleepy during meditations. From the eyelids that fell on the ground, ten tea plants grew. When their leaves were put into hot water, it banished sleep. Tea was first drunk in China in about 2700 BC. Words like chai and chini are from China. Tea reached to Europe in 16th century. At that time, tea was taken as medicine. The train reached Mariani Junction and the friends were received by Pranjol's parents. When they arrived at the Dekhaibari Tea Estate, there were tea bushes on both sides of the road. The women were plucking the new leaves from them. Pranjol's father slowed down their vehicles to allow the tractor carrying leaves to pass. Rajveer asked Pranjol's father if it wasn't the second flush of or sprouting period. The second sprouting period lasts from May to July and yielded the best tea. Pranjol's father was happy to know that Rajveer had done his homework to know about Assam and tea gardens. Rajveer said that he hoped to learn more about tea plantation while he was there. This is all about the summary of the chapter. Now, let us take the reading and explanation of the chapter. Third chapter, Tea from Assam. Pranjol, a youngster from Assam, is Rajveer's classmate at school in Delhi. Pranjol's father is the manager of a tea garden in Upper Assam. And Pranjol has invited Rajveer to visit his home during the summer vacation. Chai Garam Garam Chai, a vendor called out in a high-pitched voice. He came up to their window and asked, Chai Saib, give us two cups, Pranjol said. They sipped the steaming hot liquid. Almost everyone in their compartment was drinking tea too. Do you know that over 80 crore cups of tea are drunk every day? 
threw out the world. Rajveer said, Phew! exclaimed Pranjal. Tea really is very popular. The train pulled out of the station. Pranjal buried his nose in his detective book again. Rajveer too was an ardent fan of detective stories. But at the moment he was keener on looking at the beautiful scenery. It was green, green everywhere. Rajveer had never seen so much greenery before. Then the soft green paddy fields were away, gave way to tea bushes. It was a magnificent view against the backdrop of densely wooded hills of a sea of tea, bushed stretched as far as the eye could see. Dwarfing the tiny tea plants were tall, sturdy and shade trees and amidst the orderly rows of bushes, busily moved doll-like figures. So over here, this is a story of two friends of Pranjol and Rajveer. While these two were travelling by the train, they heard a vendor saying, Chai Garam Garam Chai. Rajveer, uh, who was well-read, told Pranjol that over 80 crore cup of tea are sipped daily in the world. From the train, they saw many beautiful tea gardens where there were ladies picking up the tea leaves. And Rajveer had never seen such a greenery in his life. It was a magnificent view for him to see the densely wooded hills of sea of tea bushes covered everywhere. In the distance of an ugly building with smoke billowing out of tall chimneys, Hey, a tea garden, Rajveer cried excitedly. Pranjol, who had been born and brought up on a plantation, didn't share Rajveer's excitement. Oh, this is a tea country now, he said. Assam has the largest concentration of plantations in the world. You will see enough gardens to last you a lifetime. I have been reading as much as I could about tea. Rajveer said, no one really knows who discovered trees. There are many legends. What legends? So it was something that Rajveer was really very excited while you know, looking at those green tea leaves, gardens and plantation. But for Pranjol, it was an ordinary thing. Why? Because he was born and brought up over there in the plantation. And he told that Assam was a tea country and had the largest concentration of tea plantation in the world. Rajvir told his friends, his friend, uh, some legends about the tea. Well, there's one about the Chinese emperor who always boiled water before drinking it. One day, a few leaves of the twigs burning under the pot fell into the water, giving it a delicious flavor. It is said that they were tea leaves. Tell me another, scoffed Pranjol. We have an Indian legend too, Bodhidharma. An ancient Bodhis ascetic cut off his eyelids because he felt sleepy during meditation. Ten tea plants grew out of the eyelids. The leaves of these plants, when put into hot water and drunk, banished sleep. Tea was first drunk in China, Rajveer added, as far or as far back as 2700 BC. In fact, words such as tea, chai, and chini are from Chinese. 
he came to europe only in the 16th century and was drunk more as medicine than as beverage the train clattered into a mariani junction the boys collected their luggages and pushed their way to the crowded platform pranjol's parents were waiting for them soon they were driving towards Decabri, the tea garden managed by Pranjol's father. An hour later, the car veered sharply off the main road. They crossed a cattle bridge and entered the tea estate. On both sides of gravel road were acre upon acre of tea bushes, all neatly pruned to the same height. Groups of tea pluckers with bamboo baskets on their backs, wearing plastic aprons, were plucking the newly sprouted leaves. So now, Rajvi told his friend some legends about tea. According to one legend, there was a Chinese emperor who always boiled water before drinking. One day, as the water was being boiled, a few leaves of the twigs burning under the pot fell into the water. it gave a delicious flavor the leaves were tea leaves and according to the another indian legend there was an ancient bodhis ascetic known as bodhi dharma who cut off his eyelids because he felt sleepy during meditations from the eyelids that fell on the ground 10 tea plants grew when their leaves were put into hot water it banished sleep tea was first drunk in china in about 2700 bc words like chai and chini are from china tea reached to europe in 16th century at that time tea was taken as medicine the train reached mariani junction and the friends were received by pranjol's parents when they arrived at the dekaibari tea estate there were tea bushes on both sides of the road women were plucking the new leaves from them pranjol's father slowed down to allow a tractor pulling a trailer load of tea leaves to pass this is the second flush or sprouting period isn't it mr borov rajveer asked it lasts from may to july and yields the best tea you seem to have done your homework before coming pranjol's father said in surprise yes mr bora rajveer admitted but i hope to learn much more while i am here so pranjol's father slowed down their vehicle to allow the tractor carrying lee tea leaves to pass rajveer asked pranjol's father if it wasn't the second flush or sprouting period the second sprouting period lasts from may to july and yielded the best tea pranjol's father was happy to know that rajveer had done his homework to know about assam and tea gardens rajveer said that he hoped to learn more about the tea plantations while he was there so this is all about the reading and explanation of 7th chapter glimpses of india I hope that every one of you have understood it. Thank you for watching and have a nice day. If you still find any doubt or difficulties you can comment down in the comment section below. Have a great day everyone.